now coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. It's Puckle! Puckle! It's Puckle! Puckle! Pokemon Underground Champions League, oh yeah! Puckle! Puckle. Welcome to another episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my spectacular co-host. We've got the lovely, as always, Sublime Manic. Hello. And we've got, uh, I don't I don't know what adjective to give you today, Linian. We've got Linian. Hi, I, I don't have adjectives. <laughs> Welcome to the uh puckle podcast puckle of course standing for the pokemon underground champions league a nonsensical name we came up with in 2007 where we talk everything from the video game to the uh trading card game to everything in between and boy howdy have things been going things have been fun i've been uh, i've been working on uh prepping for arlington in two weeks uh by that i mean i've been patiently waiting for other tournaments to complete so i can make sure i'm not being stupid not bringing something that was so uh, two seasons ago or two tournaments ago, I suppose. Yeah, essentially, like, yeah. Uh, I mean, LAIC happened last week. It was uh, uh, very unsurprising. And then uh, hopefully this week, uh, Twitter has been pretty good. There have been a lot of people who are just like, uh, so the, So what happened last week was uh, Lugia ended up being, uh, Lugia decks have been, were like 48% of day two decks. Oh, mm. uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, so Twitter is just full of... Uh, a bunch of people who keep claiming that they have Lugia counters, but they won't share them so they can take them to tournaments this weekend. So liars, like normal. Yeah, I kind of just want to watch them all, like, spectacularly burn and f- burn, like, and crash just cra- and burn. crash and burn. Um, so I'm waiting to see, but maybe there is, like, some some truth to some of it. I don't know. I think you could, I think some decks can beat it, but there it's definitely going to take some very skilled piloting, so... But I, it, Lugia is also just kind of very easy, and you can also skillfully pilot it. It's it's a whole thing. I'm still rooting for my Giratinas out there. Get Tina. Mm-hmm. I wish Tina was better. There's a very uh, famous, well, not famous, but a very fun uh, day nine bit that I always think about with competitive stuff like this, where he goes, every time you have to sit there and go, I wonder what my opponent is doing. What if they do this really counter thing? And you're doing meta, just kill him. Because nine times out of ten, the off meta thing is going to get completely stomped. Things are meta because they work. No, I do not disagree with you whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, it's always the new hot thing. It's more, I, I the only, honestly, so like I'm probably going to play Lugia in Arlington because I'm basic. And I also bought the cards already and it's kind of already a big investment in terms of that. <laughs> I think this is one of the most expensive decks like in the past year. Right, your your sunk cost fallacy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. I mean, it's gotcha. from the most recent like set. set yeah, so. that's two. Is yeah, that's two. And I was, just, and so I'm just kind of, uh, I'm just waiting to see like what tech you need to put into it to make it work. It's the hot new thing. Yeah, just to like make sure that there's nothing that changed in the meta too much this past week. Like I see a lot of the the anti meta decks. And a lot of them just are based on trapping your Lugia in active. So, like, if you just play Switch, like, honestly, just, like, run some Switch, you'll be fine, I think. Yeah, what do you do to win the mirror? Uh, you pray. You pray you get heads. And then they didn't draw any Orkley Ops. That's the game. But that's, that's enough about me. Uh, <laughs> you guys been up to anything fun? I mean, there's a new game that came out, obviously. There but... is a new game that came out, so I'm living, honestly, my best life. Oh, yeah? How's it uh... going? I'm just going to say it. Y'all know I, I'm very openly critical when I don't like something. Um, yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, right? you are. Yes, I am. I will never say you're not. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to give the sublime review. I love Gen 9. I do. I do. It's been the most fun I've had in a Pokemon game in a very long time. We got a YouTube comment yesterday um, <laughs> that was just like, it was on the episode, not last week's episode, but the week's prior episode. And uh, the guy just like wrote a paragraph about why uh, he's scared that we're all just becoming shills for the game. And I'm like, I don't it's know. So if, you, like, if, listen, if you listen to that episode, Lin- Linny and Whimsicott and I are just like, this game kind of <laughs> runs horribly. Uh, 
But it's it's so good, other than the fact it runs, like, Horribly. absolutely inexcusable yeah, crap. I haven't had very many problems with it, I'm happy to say. Uh, obviously, like, people in the background are walking, like, claymation yes. slowed down on a quaalude, but, um... Yeah, yeah. yeah that's all, like, I haven't had any, like, bugs or anything on my side, so I, I like, not to say that those things aren't happening. No, I definitely have, it, have had it crash, like, twice. I've had a couple crashes, but... The best thing that's ever happened is uh, I was stuck in a falling animation loop uh, until it decided I was flying and I rocketed quite literally from about the ruins outside of the first uh, little wander zone. I got shot all the way to the uh, to Katie's gym where I smacked into the watchtower. This and is that's amazing. The good, bad bug. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. I know it's hilarious. I that couldn't, I I couldn't like replicate that. it. I was like, no. Yeah. I love yeah, that. I've actually loved the open world Pokemon game. So, mm-hmm. come at me or don't, but like you know, live your life. I think the way they did it was very, very well done. Yeah, I, it might be the most fun I've had as an adult playing Pokemon. I I don't know. I think there's like something to be said for Legends Arceus versus this, but yeah, but Legends Arceus is its own thing. So I'm not comparing. I agree. I agree. I mean, they're both mainline Pokemon games, and I think in the more traditional Pokemon games, this definitely ranks some of the most fun, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I do miss like just straight up random encounters because, and I like we can no, argue. I don't. We can argue that they're not there, I but the don't. number of times I've just run into Nimble is too high. <laughs> uh, uh, at least when I get random encounters in the other games, it could be a not Nimble. Okay. D- hey, it could be Capsicid. It could be a Capsicid because he blends in with the surroundings. It could be Capsicid. That's another one. That's one of those ones. Yeah. You know what I cannot find, though? You know what has been a giant pain in my ass? I don't know how many trees I have to balk. Applin. Slackoth. Applin? Yeah. I Applin have... is bad. Uh, make a dragon encounter sandwich. That is the only way that, uh, mm. that you're able to do it. Sandwiches? Like, okay, so they have those gimmicks every gen with different... Uh, yeah, different mechanic with different point. foods and malasada go into the curry go yeah. into the sandwich yeah i mean the curry was garbage last time but this one has been way better i don't hate it you know what makes me like it more than i should you know what makes me like it more than i should the fact that it's the same music that plays when arvin had his scenes because i love me some <laughs> arvin oh i don't even I, the reason i love it honestly is that it's almost surgeon simulator but with sandwiches yeah yeah, that's true, too. And so, like, there's definitely, like, a little bit of just, like, this isn't gonna be perfect every time. I, I want pretty sandwiches, too. So it's like, uh, you better put it correctly. <laughs> I have a no sloppy sandwich. They totally did it on purpose, too, because after you, like, put down, like, the it. first piece, it definitely changes the camera angle to screw you up on the rest of it. Yeah, it's like, oh, uh, how, how much higher does it need to be for it to land correctly? Yeah, right. Yeah, there's uh, definitely some eyeballing going on, but I, I love I've it. enjoyed it. I, I, yeah, I, I really enjoy the sandwich making, actually. Also, like, the selfie feature, <laughs> I realize that's such a little thing. I'm obsessed with taking selfies, like, all the time. Nothing about this surprises me. Yeah, I've been playing less of the game than I expected, purely uh, for other Pokemon reasons, uh, because this game needs to be converted into a PTU for us. But the devs we have said, doing. we're done. So that's now fallen to me, and Sublime's been helping. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, frankly, Lydia and I, I would say we're the two most experienced people for doing that, having made our own PTU um, project. Other than, like, the devs who are gone. Yeah. So we get to, like, like not both have to content, deal with their so. mistakes. So <laughs> We don't have to deal with their mistakes. <laughs> Look, Gen that's, 7 was a time. Yes. I believe yeah, Gen yeah, 7 was a time. I believe that. Yeah, I, they, they actually left the PTU guys. They just well, drop it? they've been doing it for it's 10 abandoned. years, getting yeah. paid uh, zero dollars, and uh, are now like, project. they're like, yeah, mm-hmm. hey, we were starting that in college, and now we're like 35, Easy. and we don't, we have families and don't even play Pokemon anymore, so like, See, the irony bye. is, I would have been too busy during college, but like, <laughs> right? I'm having, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think they're just done, and you know what, I get it, they did 10, they did 10 years sure. free. But uh, it was a real, real, uh, it's a lot of work. I can understand why they looked at this desk. Yes, and it went, was. Like, pass. I made a hard yeah, pass. Like, I, yeah. Takes years to do something like that. So I get it. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to cut us off here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to go talk about some news because there's been some. So there let's has. cue that epic music. <laughs> Town 
Radio Tower. This just in. Welcome to the news. In the news, we've got a few things. Uh, Series 1 of Pokemon VGC on Scarlet and Violet has started uh, for ranked seasons 1 and 2. It bans all of the legendaries and paradox Pokemon from play. Uh, Roaming Gimme Ghoul is also banned because it probably doesn't exist yet, so that's probably why. Uh, it does not. There, if you look at the list, they just like blank out the slots in the Pokedex that aren't allowed, and there's like a random spot in between Gimme Ghoul and Golden Go, mm. and so it is that Gimme Ghoul. Season one runs until January fifth, and season two runs into through January thirty first. So go play while you can. Uh, it's a fun meta. I'm very excited. We have a poke of the episode team for it, and I'm very excited to go through it because it's so wacky, and it's actually meta. I like. I can't get over it. The Scarlet so Violet ridiculous. meta is wild in it is, every it's format. Pretty crazy. It is wild. Yeah, we it's pretty crazy. Yeah, we have a whole episode for this next week, but yeah. It, Anytime you have a new regional deck, that happens. Yeah, yes, is, but this one is the weirdest I've seen in a while. Yes, I I absolutely agree with Linian. Actually, like I like we could go on and be like, I think Z Hypnosis Zerkatry is silly, and like that was a pre bank meta thing, and I'm sitting over here now, like mm, my Dondozo is eating my Tatsugiri. <laughs> And now it's really buff. And now my Flamigo comes out and copies those stat boosts. Or or even just the absurdity that is, hey, so this Pokemon uh, has speed boost and stored power, so... Yeah, right? Just have fun with and that. And then it drops your special defense two stages. That's, yeah. Yeah, you don't even do thing. that with this set, but you can. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. I it, It's just nuts. It's just wild, and I yeah. it's very exciting. I'm, I'm gonna, impressed I'm gonna, by how many good things there are, yeah. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get into ranked on stream this week, maybe. Uh, so I, I'm very excited to start doing that. I'm still fixing finishing my decks. I need to. I think I have everything except for some of the Violet exclusives. So I, I was waiting for my wife to. Well, finish then maybe up. we should trade some stuff because I, I got it. Uh, possibly, but I was gonna wait for my wife to finish. I mean, so you I can, can trade, trade your her. wife after too. That's it's not true. like you can't That's catch true. the exclusives again. That's true. Maybe we should hook up after this. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, uh, tell us more, uh, Linian, about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yeah, so Scarlet and Violet got a patch where the developers, uh, or Nintendo specifically, which is actually even more rare, uh, were like, hey, we're watching stuff and we're going to try to get this fixed. So, uh, If only they could watch Timer. Sure. Uh, so that's, um, unprecedented? Uh, yes the patch, and no, The patch I think. is not unprecedented. Nintendo taking, uh, taking a lead that on that. Statement. That is unprecedented. Um, yes, Nintendo. Patch, yeah, yeah. Nintendo saying, "Hey, we're gonna fix it. We promise. We're, we're sorry." Uh, yeah, it, yeah. It doesn't happen very, very yeah. often, uh, especially not for someone who's technically a second-party developer. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. <they've, laughs> oh, no, it's fixed, like a, it's like one and a half-party developer at this point. But yeah, uh, they fixed a lot of the bugs. Uh, the game still has memory leak, so turning it on and off is still advisable every once in a while. Um, but, uh, a lot of it was fixed. Pokemon now close their eyes while they're asleep. Uh, the Elite Four music got fixed. Um, I didn't have that bug, and I'm so glad, and I'm so sorry for everyone Same. who did. <laughs> Same. Yeah, I never had but, it. But, uh, yeah. Yay, we got a patch. It's not for stability yet, but... <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, you'll get another one, I know, I, so it's fine. I think we will. I mean, the, yeah. Pokemon has a pretty good history of patching the games. And I think, especially because you know there's DLC coming, like, it's going to be fixed with the DLC yeah. at minimum. Yeah. yeah, and there's bank support, or home support, rather. Exactly. So. That's coming in February, probably. You, you're absolutely correct. So there's, I'm just there's waiting time. to move my 6 IV ditto. <laughs> All right. Well, you need one, Sublime? We mm. could talk. Uh, okay. Well, I, uh, do we have the technology already? Possibly. Uh, uh, oh, wow. And so, uh, but you should tell me about Pokemon Unite Supply. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to, only because, my god, <laughs> you, know, you know. Anyway, they're adding two new battle items to the game, though, and that's exciting. A scarf that increases basic attack speed after the third attack, and the healing crown that heals up to 10% of your basic attack damage. Oh. oh. And also, um, Kung Fu Panda's in the game now, so... Go Urshifu. Have fun with Urshifu. Pokemon Unite players. And, yeah. I don't know if it's good or not. Yeah. I heard it's if probably... Sableye is. isn't killing you, yeah. but, you know. All right. Well, Pokemon Go, the favorite segment. Of, uh, Hoenn confirmed. Pokemon Go Tour has been confirmed for February 25th through 26th. 
exploring the red and blue orbs and having a shiny Jirachi at the end for those of you who buy a ticket. Uh, though it does not sound like it does sound like they're not going to be implementing Kecleon uh, by the time of the event. Uh, citing most Hoenn Pokemon that will be available. Mm. Uh, Kecleon is still not in Pokemon Go, which is incredibly surprising. I like to believe that's bizarre. In my heart of hearts, Kecleon is in the game. It's just nobody's tapped randomly enough on the screen to find it. I honest, I, I do also think that they're probably holding off on Kecleon for when they finally do catch up with the games. And they need something new to put in. Need something new to put in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, we've added all of the uh, legends, the ruins, the paradox Pokemon. But you know what? We got Kecleon. <laughs> we got Kecleon. I, I think they left out a couple other Pokemon as well. But Kecleon is definitely the glaring. Uh, the glaring. It's missing. Um, they did. I mean, it did take a while for Smeargle to show up in the game as well. Not nearly as long as Kecleon, but it did take Smeargle a hot second to get there. They also had like a, a thing they were doing with that. Uh, mm. At the end of last week's UB event, uh, we received teasers for Nagnadal, Stack Attack, and Blacephalon, but that's getting put on the back burner because it's uh, actually Mythical Wishes with Kelbia special research that you can buy. Uh, <laughs> uh, I woke up. Leery eyed uh to open to go so I could, you know, do a quick catch, get that out of the way. And it was like, hey, do you want to buy Keldeo? And I went, Do I wanna uninstall this app? Yeah. It's Pokemon Go. It's fine. Yes, you do. I think Pokemon Go, I think the player base is decreasing, but their revenue is increasing every year. Yep. That's sad. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't spent money on it in a very long time. Well, I, I only have picked it back up because it. I wanted to finish getting a Mel Mel Metal. But uh yeah, yeah, that's valid. But I just, um, every day, this gets very, very easy to just, like, you hold it, you watch the app tremble in fear, and you're like, I don't know if I'm gonna pull the trigger, but I could. <laughs> well, tell us more, Sublime. Tell us more. Let's tell you more about Pokemon Go, because there's never a shortage of news there. <laughs> uh, so research breakthroughs will be taking the same six for the next three months, so... And they're all bad. If you were insulted by Galarian Mime um, being a research reward, as opposed to, you know, like a Moltres, um, you'll still be. We also have Gumi and Furfrau, because, you know, that's comparable. Also, uh, fight me, Kieran. Um, raids <laughs> this month will include Keldeo's wireless provider and friends. Uh, Verizian Wireless, um, Terrakian, and Cabalion, as well as a Curum at the end of the month, which is cool. And there will also be a raid day, Hisuian Avalug. That is cool. Uh, Christmas Eve? Yeah, 2 to 5 p.m. But yeah, go go uh, play Pokemon Go on Christmas Eve if that's your thing. That could be a fun thing. Potentially, yeah. actually. I mean, it could be cute. I mean, listen, I would rather do that than watch certain Christmas movies again. Uh, so, that's true. You know. Some modern Christmas movies are fun, I'm gonna be honest. Modern Christmas movies are fun, that's true. All right, Puckle's Pokey prediction. Do you think there's gonna be a Fury content update similar to PLA getting Daybreak, uh, maybe with certain Pokemon this time, before DLC releases? I'm gonna say hard no. Uh, hard no. I'm They're just gonna put it in the DLC. I'm yeah. gonna say soft no. The soft being there's the stuff that's in the bank decks, uh, or the home import decks. And I There's think a lot they might too. do more There's... Charizard-esque raids, but that is the only thing I foresee similar. That is, I would expect that potentially, only because they were really good out the gate, but they were really good out the gate the last time with Sword and Shield. And I would love to see more things like that, where it's just like, hey, here's random Pokemon that's in home, go catch it. Uh, but I, I don't know. I just don't have too much faith. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I, I've seen them flop before. I would love like weekly raid events though, like they're doing, and they announce it ahead of time instead of the week of. That'd be nice. And yeah. we all go and get happy, and we get Pokemon that aren't in the decks yet, and we get to feel like we got something. That sounds like a good time, Pokemon. I should be your PR person. Maybe a Snivy. Maybe a Snivy. Maybe uh, Snivy's not in the in the home. I'm aware <laughs> the home release. But I'm hoping it'll get added because it's the next gen to be remade. I think it won't get added for that reason. That's what happened with uh, Gen that 4 and Sword and Shield. Kills me. Right? That kills me. Like, you look me. at every fossil Pokemon that, that got added to Sword and Shield, and they skipped Rampardos and Bastiodon. 
That kills me. Well, you know, it has to get in eventually. Yeah, eventually. I. It's been how many years? I don't want to think about it. Anyway. Since 2018. Sublime, as a mini or fan, I get it. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> mini is the same. It, I think we're literally missing something. It's it's almost single digits now. It's like 15 or 16 Pokemon <laughs> that haven't seen the light of day in a very long time. Yeah, it's mine and Linian's favorite, literally. No, no, I, I don't disagree with you. I think it's nonsense. I, I do expect those Pokemon yeah, we'll specifically to be in the DLC. Yeah. Um, I, so, like, it's coming. It's got to be coming. Yeah, I think so. I, I do expect them to be there, because I think every Pokemon before the Switch ends its run with Pokemon um, needs to have a home on the Switch. where they well, it has a, a home on the Switch. Well, well, it, it just needs, needs to, to it get needs out to... of it. It needs to be able to come... Yeah, not a retirement Every home. Pokemon needs to be able to come out of the Pokemon yeah. home and into a game on the Switch, I think. That part. That, that is my personal feeling. And we're very, very close. I One of my favorite Gen 5 Pokemon is still missing, too, which is Zebstrika. Like, I really love... Zebstrika! You want to talk about an overlooked Pokemon. I love... Zebstrika. I love the design of Blitzel and Zebstrika. It is! I'm so shocked it hasn't gotten a variant. Yeah. I, I thought that we would definitely see it in this one. I mean, we got Giraffery. <laughs> like, I was just like, oh, maybe we'll get, uh, maybe we'll get that Blitzel back. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. But oh, well. Uh, we do have, uh, oh, a couple other things. I believe Claude 9 is going to be doing this weekend on the 10th. Uh, he is going to be around noon Eastern. He's going to be doing a big trivia event on stream over at Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Pokal podcast. So be sure to check that out. Uh, his trivia streams are some of my favorite things. He's very good at it. Also, they are absurdly difficult, so just, like, be mentally yeah. ready. Yeah. Additionally, uh, Puckle Advent Calendar is ongoing, for those of you who aren't on the Discord. I've been purposely keeping it to Discord this time, just so... Uh, it's not super exciting yet, because we are still doing uh, giveaways on Sword and Shield, because the software that we use to distribute uh, Pokemon hasn't updated for Scarlet and Violet yet, but we do anticipate it will be soon. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in that, come to our Discord, PuckleDiscord.com. You can get it. We're going to start putting them on social media as soon as we get the new bot for uh, Scarlet and Violet. Uh, also, patrons are getting uh, shiny Japanese 6IV dittos. So uh, if you want that, be sure to join the Patreon. There's going to be plenty of chances to get it throughout the whole month. All in, which, in which game is that one? That's going to Scarlet and Violet. Good. All right. Just wanted to make sure that yes. was clear. Yeah, because uh, it has to be for patrons because I'm doing it manually right now. And... Mm -hmm. I'm going to be test driving a lot of features with it, and I'd rather it be with a smaller group of people than the general public. Understood. All right. Well, on that note, we are going to kick it on over to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon. Hello and welcome to the Poke Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz your co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. I'm Professor Snag with the rules. The co-hosts are working together as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions that you, the listeners, have submitted on the Discord server. Each question is worth one point, with Pokedex and multiple answer questions worth more, for a total of seven points. The hosts can use a free hint at any time. If they get all the answers correct without using the hint, they can cash it in for an eighth point. Welcome to Puckle's Pokey Quiz. Thank you for that introduction. We've got great questions today. Today is the first week we are allowing Gen 9 questions in. So I do hope, oh, no. I do, uh, not hope, but I do hope <laughs> that you two are ready for, for the uh, ultimate action here. All hmm. right. This is going to be from Trev, the late night legend. In Generation 9... When you defeat a Snowvert no, no. or an Obama Snow, what item do they drop? Snowverberry's final answer. Oh yes, that is correct. Snowverberry's is correct. You guys are one for one. Why do I? Why did I, I know that? It, <laughs> you know, what? it reminds me of Skyrim because you'd get snowberries. So like Snowverberry's okay. always amused me. Yes. I think I just noted that like absently at a menu, and then my brain was like, "That's hilarious," and I just. I guess. Uh, Where are the snowver berries on snowver? Uh, they're white. They look like little. They them. look like ornaments sometimes. Probably, I imagine. <laughs> you know what? I really like that. All right. So the next question is going to be from Farmer Fox. Blaze Breed and Aqua Breed Tauros learn Flare Blitz and Wave Crash respectively at level fifty-five. What move does Combat Breed learn at this level? Double Edge. I just had to convert it yesterday. Uh, or. 
maybe two days ago. It's, it's yep. Double Edge. Oh, thank God. Yep, you're carrying us. <laughs> double Edge <laughs> is correct. Uh, it does learn Double Edge at level 55. Uh, well, uh, Blaze Breed and uh, Aqua Breed learned Flare Blitz and Wave Crash. Well, you guys are two for two. Your next, e- your next entry, uh, your next question is your Pokedex entry question, as always. And mm-hmm. this one is going to come from Liger, the trivia master himself. It's Violet Dex entry reads: It drives enemies out of its nest by sucking in air, uh, sucking in air enough air to fill its long, narrow lungs, then releasing an air, the air in an intense blast. Who's that Pokemon? Um, it's it, the, it sounds like what's the uh, electric bird? Kilowatt roll? No, that whole thing is about it's, like soaring no. and stuff. Um, it's, I'm pretty sure this is Dunsparce because it gets boom burst now. Oh, and it would have a narrow throat. That's true. Like the you whole know what? thing that makes sense. is is a giant tube. Yeah, that checks out. Is the Dunsparce your answer? Yes. Yeah, let's go after Dunsparce. The Dunsparce is correct. Uh, the, it is not Kilowatt. The other right. entry was from Scarlet, sense. and it says, This Pokemon uses its hard tail to make its nest by boring horrors, uh, bo- boring holes into bedrock deep underground. The nest can reach lengths of over six miles. All right, well, you guys you guys are four. Well, dang to Dunsparce. You guys are four for three. Uh, this is the best people have been in a while. <laughs> and it's all been Gen 9 so far. I don't think this next question will be Gen 9, but we are going to go ahead and get this question from P. McGee. Which five Pokemon have a unique ability that provides 1.5 times power to a specific type? Oh, a specific type. So adaptability um, would not count. Bombardier. Is, uh, yeah, I, it's this, is only worth two, this is only worth two Rocky points, payload. by the way. And there are uh, five answers. I will give you... So you need four? Uh, give me four, and I'll give... Yeah, for every two, I'll give it to you. Uh, okay. What's the... Uh, uh, Delmise. That uh, has Steelworker. Delmise. Bombardier Delmise, and Delmise are both correct. Uh, they, they are both correct. There are three more. And they boost specific types of moves? Specific types of moves. Oh, Fairy Power, Dark Power. Or, or Fairy Aura, Dark Aura. So, uh, is there any Veltal? He said by 50%, so those by wouldn't 50%. count. Oh, by 50%. Never mind. Okay. Well, dang! Um, I'm yeah. so excited about that. Yeah, no, that would have <laughs> that would have solved it. Um, drought doesn't Pokemon count. Or abilities. I need the Pokemon, looking for Pokemon that have the abilities. This... They boost a specific type by fifty percent. Yes. Yeah, nothing else gets rocky. Well, what I was Halo. incidentally thinking was like drizzle and drought. No, I did, yeah. technically. Well, I'm not going to give you a free hit. I'd give you a free hint, but you guys are doing really well, so yeah. <laughs> um. But would would something like Drizzle and Drought count? No. Where it no, no. provides the, a okay. The, the ability itself. So it specifically boosts a specific type. Tight. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we are stumped now that we got one. <laughs> you do well, have like, the hint, the p- but no, because I it, we got the point. So the hint is a, a point if we got the base set total. Uh, the base set well, we question love a rather. Run. Um. I. Huh. 50% stat, 50% damage boosts to specific types. Um, would it count as if it's like under certain circumstances or does it have to be all in? I think it's all in. These look like they're all in. Okay. Um, oh! <laughs> Reggie Drago and Reggie Eliki are two. Those are also correct. The fifth one that you missed well, is, uh, is Preserker. Yep. Steely Spirit. It's Preserker. Yes. Oh, Steely Spirit, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Good for you guys. That is... All Gen 8 and 9. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, it is. Uh, they, it all came from... Well, technically Delmise is Gen 7, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Delmise is the OG. But yes, that gives you guys... You, you're sitting at 6 or for 4 right now. You still have the hint to cash in. You have your base stat question, as always. And your next question comes from G. McP. Whoever this is. Who is G. McP? There's a P. McGee and there's a Liger. I thought Liger was G. McP. Uh, <laughs> all right. This is going to be... Uh, this This question asks, what electric type has the highest base HP of all electric types? Probably Belly Bolt. Is Belly Bolt more than Ampharos? Oh, uh, definitely more than Ampharos. It's like 110. That probably... Oh, wait. No. Uh, electric types? Yeah. Harry, uh, not oh, Harry, it's the uh, uh, Iron Paradox. Hands. 
Iron Hands. I, I just want to call them by their names still. It's I, hard to adjust I, to that. Honestly, uh, there is there is a... I don't even want to say a theory, but there is a very likely uh, conclusion that these aren't actually Pokemon. Like, it's not actually We've been the... saying that, like, how many years now with the uh, Ultra Beasts as well, right? Yeah, so. but, but no, like, that these aren't literally what happened... These aren't... Basically, that they came from imagination... Not from uh, actual Nature, past. future and past. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and there's there's a lot to support it. We don't need to go into that right now. But with that theory in mind, I like calling them by their uh, fictitious names and not what they supposedly are. Uh, either way, I do think Iron Hands is correct, and we are way off topic. Oh, it's definitely Iron Hands. <laughs> like it's definitely Iron Hands. Iron Hands is correct. Iron Hands has a base HP of 154. The second place actually space se- <laughs> The second place actually goes to Lantern with oh, 125. Right. That is 120. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Belly Boat and Bolt and Stunfisk choice. tie for third with 109 and then Iron Thorns is actually at 100. So, there mm-hmm. we go. There you go. You guys did good though. You swept the whole thing. That's 8 points. We did. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we've been so into Gen 9. Uh I mean, I asked Gen 9 questions on purpose because I want to and oh, I gotta log in to be able to get to the thing. Uh, that's gonna be fun. Uh, but yes, uh, there are standings, and I don't know what they are because apparently I got kicked out of my email. So, uh, congrats to you two. If you want more Puckles Pokey Quiz, you can tune in next week to uh, to be sure that you hit up uh, hit up the next set of questions, or you can join our Patreon and get some game corner action going, which is just thirty forty minutes of just this. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Until next time, though, uh, we're going to kick it on over to the topic. Hey, Puckalonians. I just wanted to remind you that our advent calendar is coming this week. From the 1st to the 24th of December, we will be giving away a different Pokemon. We'll be starting in Sword and Shield, since the bot for Scarlet and Violet isn't ready yet. But if you're a patron at the Ultra Ball tier, we will be sending it time slots to come and claim a 6 IV Japanese Ditto starting on the 1st. Of course... You can check our Discord and our social media for all of the updates for which Pokemon are being given away and how to get them. Be sure you go and do that if you're interested, and I want to say happy holidays and happy trading. Welcome to the topic. If you read the show, you already know we're going to do top five, bottom five, Gen 9 Paul slash Paldean Pokemon, mostly because we want to be able to include things like Tauros, uh, Pokemon introduced in Gen 9, I guess. Uh, this is going to be our standard. We introduce a Pokemon. We talk about its design. Uh, I think this is going to be mostly design based, right? Like we're not going to have like personal feelings because they're so new. Come, no, yeah. <laughs> I think mostly from a design perspective. Oh, we might have. <laughs> oh, well, we might have arguments, but I'm just going to like prelude this with my personal feelings about the designs, and you can feel free to not slam me or or to slam me. Actually, um, in Gen Eight, I had a lot of other feelings going on at the same time, but I can say that in Gen Eight, I really liked pretty much every design that they announced like everything was at least average if not better that's how i feel a lot about gen 8 designs in gen 9 i feel like there are a lot of pokemon that i'm just like but why but why do we really need this interesting do we really need this i don't think this is necessary and i do think there's some like quote unquote below average pokemon that are just not exciting especially in terms of design so we'll go ahead i mean feel free to disagree with me you can disagree with me on that but i think there are a lot more lows i think there are some good highs though but i think there's a lot of lows in uh, scarlet and violet and so my personal, I, I guess I'll start things off if you guys don't mind. That's fine. Top or bottom? Starting high or low? I'm going to go high first. Just honestly to get the argument out of the way, because we already have this between segments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I like Toad is Cool. I mean, Toad is Cruel is cool as well. I like both of them. But I, I'm going to say Toad is Cool specifically, only because you see it running around the overworld more often. And I think... I like how it pops up and down. Yeah. And it's so goofy when it runs because it's just got the two and it's like just running with its legs. And it's so cute. I I hate it so much. (laughs) Why do you hate it so much? I hate the animation. I look at it and I just, I'm filled with murderous rage. It looks like someone tried to make a joke Pokemon and it accidentally got left in. Yeah. Uh, Perfect. This is amazing. I think it's a great interpretation of, like, a Spore user, because, like, you know, you gotta have a new Spore user. Yes. That is one of the downfalls. It's also really bad at being a Spore user. No, no, it actually is. That's not unfair. I got, like, super excited with Toad's Cruel because I realized the stats weren't that far off from Tentacruel. It's exactly the same, isn't it? They did the same. 
and I was just like, oh my gosh, Tentacruel so fast, and you learn sport, and then you look at its ability, and it's like, be the by the way, if you use any kind of status moves, you actually quash yourself and make yourself go last in priority. And it's just like, are, are you kidding me? What? It would have, because I feel like it would have had a very interesting place in the meta if it was a fast spore user. Yeah. Uh, I like Toad's Cruel more just because uh, it the colors are much better on it and less disturbing. And uh, I like that, I like how afraid I am when it runs, where it jumps and throws its whole six foot body at me. That is abject terrifying. <laughs> its nose is disturbing. Yeah, its nose is disturbing. A little bit. Mouth, whatever. A little bit, but. It's fine. It's great. I love it. I think we have to basically count it as a whole line, right? Because how do you pick? If we count it as a whole line, I think it's a very fun, especially with this typing. I think Grass Ground is a super yeah. interesting typing, and it's only on Torterra, which obviously they don't feel they don't feel very good about putting in starter Pokemon in the games anymore. So I I really like seeing that typing expand to other Pokemon. I mean, I if you're if you're okay with Toad Scroll, Linian, I'll put Toad Scroll there. I like Toad Scroll as well. I would not put Toad's Curl in top five. I would put it in the middle of the pack, and I just I'm primal hatred for this know. Pokemon. I don't know if I put it in top five, but I like it. So let's table that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So bottom. Is there anything that excites you? Bottom. Okay. Yeah. Bottom. Bottom five. I think Palmot doesn't need to exist. I think it's dumb. What? No. I like Palmot a lot. I think for me it would be Wug Trio. Okay. So I don't disagree with Wug Trio, but. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can get there. I, I think Palma is unexciting. I think I think it's just like a failed opportunity because one, the typing school, electric fighting. One, we, all, we again, we also got a better one later on in yeah. Iron Hands. But they're very different, which I appreciate. Yes, they are very different. But I just think I, I think the evolution from Palmo to Palmot in terms of design is just not that different. And I really dislike it. It could have gone straight from Palmy and arguably yes. it would only have been improved. I don't think it needed the middle stage, you know? Like, Palmy stands up, and then from Palmo to Palmot, I guess he gets a little bit lankier. It gets a collar. Yeah. It gets better hair. It gets a tan. I think it could have, like Linnea said, just gone from Palmy to Pal Palmot. But you can disagree with me. I do see that. Yeah. I see that, uh, looking at the three of them. But, like, I don't know. You think it's one of the worst designs? I think it's a missed opportunity. I I wouldn't say it's the worst like it's it doesn't hit that for me okay okay well we can we can say both mine are garbage this time and i'm okay with this that's fair uh uh who wants to go next sublime or linian i don't i have a are we going for something good or something bad we do one of each as we go around the circle you do one of each okay so here's something that i actually kind of like this pokemon but i do find it ugly <laughs> okay uh in a way that i wish it wasn't uh i guess i'll say and that's scovillain the only thing that, like, saves it is it's really unique typing, and it's a really cool Pokemon. Sure, and I like the idea of there being, a, like, a spicy chili pepper Pokemon. Yeah. I just wish it looked different. It looked cool. Or if you want it to look menacing, I, I think it just looks derpy instead of menacing, you know, like... I'm gonna have to put it on our Twitter. I have It's the head shape. I have that old picture from when we went to Nationals, like, back in 2016 or 2017, whichever year it was. Oh, I love that picture, yeah. The jalapeno, yeah. And it's uh, the the jalapeno that Whimsicott drew. I'm going to have to pull that out and take a picture and put it on Twitter and, and social media just so people can see. Because, like, when I think of fire, fire grass Pokemon, like, that's what I imagined for so long. And then we got Scoville, and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I, I Well, obviously, there was a lot of, like, anticipation for when this type got yeah. out. And I don't want it to, like, skew my perception. And I like Scoville, and I just wish it looked better. Yeah. Better. You know what? I, I'd be okay with putting that in the bottom. I'd be 100%. I would too. I don't hate it as much as some people do, but I'm just... Eh. No, I, some people really hate it, and I don't. I, I like Scavillain, but I think it's one of the weaker designs. Yeah. I think it let us down. I, I agree with that. I agree it's a letdown. <sighs> so do you have a top sublime? Uh, sure. Um, well, no one's gonna agree with me, but I will just say I'm obsessed <laughs> I'm obsessed with Quackwaval. I don't have a problem with Quackwaval. I have no problem with it. I, I you know, like there's so many new Pokemon. I'm just gonna say I like all the new starters. 
I don't know if I like the starters or I was just so burned by Gen 8 that anything with any kind of personality... Was it an improvement? You know what? That might be true. That might be true. Because, like, I wouldn't say any of the starters are just... I'm just like, heck yeah, this is the, this is awesome. Uh, I will say, I actually switched the starter I was going to pick when I saw Quackwavel. Really? I'm not even... Like, I'm obsessed with Quackwavel. I didn't even look. Uh, it hits a lot of boxes for me that, like, are very, very niche. Mm. It's based on the um, Canarias Island, which um, has some of my favorite performers in the world. Uh, this is me being super gay, but like the drag that comes out of the Canarias is world class and it's a dancer and it's got an extra costume. And uh, it, it does a lot for me as a fan of uh, gay things, actually. <laughs> I I have. <laughs> yeah, I just do not like it's how it is portioned that it's just skinny Donald. Mm. So like I think it's an above average design. I wouldn't put it. I wouldn't then put it in top five. I wouldn't put it in top five. But that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I I find that fair. I do like it. I like all the starters. I just want to say that. That's fair. Yeah. Well, you know what's a top five for me? Also, Arboliva. Yeah, I could I could see that. I think it's a cool Pokemon. I could see that. Love the name. Love the design. Love the line. I just the, the name. Love the typing. The name greats, if only because they missed the opportunity to call it Tallev. Tallev is a good name, but it's a Spanish pun, right? Yes, I know. I'm I'm very aware, and I appreciate that. But Tallev, I like Tallev. I'm very appreciative. But Tallev could have been very funny. It kind of fe- makes me feel of like smug leaf all over again and water. <laughs> From Gen a Five, bit, we, yeah, yeah, it makes me feel like that it, it, when you say that. I, I mean, I'm okay with putting Abeliva up up top like that. We could, we sure. could put it in the top five. It's got a great design. Yeah, I don't... you got a good grass and a bad grass. There we go. All right. Well, Lydian, what do you got? Play some sick beats. I want to start with a Pokemon that has very quickly shot into uh, the top of its type for me, and um, it's it's really good, and that is Palafin. Uh. The evolution uh, being just the heart, I thought was kind of su- silly at first, but honestly, I'm liking it more and more uh, as I do it. Do you know how many references to Superman that Pokemon has? An insane number. So many, and I love it. Uh, the two different designs are both strong, if a little, uh, like the, the water one has a couple, like the, the bulky one has a couple design choices that are odd, but I do really like it. It's got some it's got a gorgeous shiny, which makes it look almost like an orca. Uh, yes, it does look very whale-like uh, for a dolphin. Also, I really like that you can get a uh, base stat total 650 Pokemon with uh, your only cost being I have to switch. Which is je- just just singles? It, it's singles. It's even, even in doubles if you're running just like flip. Doesn't it get flip turn too? It does get flip turn. It gets flip turn when it evolves to encourage this. Doesn't it get flip turn? Though? It does get flip turn. <laughs> no, it's it's a wonderful Pokemon. I actually really like it. I'm down with that. Yeah. There's so many things I love about it because the ability is even called zero to hero. Which is so good. And just makes me think of the song from Hercules. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm here for it. I think Superman fish could totally get it. I'm I'm here for top five with the uh, Palafin. I'm down with it as well. All right, that makes that makes me happy. That <laughs> for those of you at home who don't understand the Superman references, one it evolves at level 38 specifically, so that's that's a reference to 1938 when like the first Superman comic came out. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is just Superman because the idea is he switches out and he goes and changes his clothes <laughs> and he comes back. Yeah, no one can see it. No one can see it. When people were trying to figure out how to evolve it, um, people were trying to find phone booths. Yeah. Like that. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. It's great. Uh, I have a shiny one. I named it Diana because, you know, Wonder Woman. And also, for some reason, a, fi- uh, a physical attacking water type named Diana triggers memories. I love that this is the dolphin Pokemon we got. Yeah, we got. And it. it yeah. It's terrifying. It's great. For bottom, I have something I do not anticipate much resistance on. What is wrong with the man who made Spide Ops? Oh, Spinefs is such a bad so Pokemon. So blocky. Why? Yeah. Why? Okay, it's blocky, but- Least favorite early bug in a while. That's fair. I like tar- Taruntula more than Spidops. Taruntula is fine. Spidops is garbage. Yeah, it's Spidops. It's Spidops. Like, I don't even know- So, like, we had a Pokemon that was literally just Minecraft, right? 
but I like it. In Knackle Stack and Garnackle, but at least the names are fun. They are. I think they're actually really cute Pokemon in terms of like what their whole theme is as well. When I first saw Knackle, it reminds me of like a Mario mushroom. I'm like, oh, does that let me like dig? <laughs> Knackle Stack is great. I love the name, and it's got the cool salt abilities, and I really, really like it. But they, uh, they definitely like messed up. Spide Ops are just like, what are you doing here? Like, what, what's going on? Why are you a Pokemon? It like it's a Saint Andrew's cross spider, which is why the legs are bunched. But then it's like doing combat cat's cradle. Like none of it works together. It's just it's not good, and like the honestly, the stats are garbage too. Well, sure, it's an early bug, but like they really. It's it's garbage, but garbage defensively is bad. Nimble to, like, low kicks is, like, way better. Agree. They made it as usable as they could. Same with Relor and Rabska. Low kicks, I wouldn't be surprised if it actually makes makes waves in some tier of competitive singles on Smogon. Sure, it'll probably be in, like, RU, but, like, you know. Well, yeah, because it's got tinted lens and then a lot of priority to use with it, right? Yeah, it's actually really decent. It's a decent Pokemon. They definitely messed up Spide Ops. And, I mean, Low Kicks has a cool design, frankly. Yeah, and Spide Ops has none of that. Spide Ops is, looks awful. I enjoy it, how it behaves in the world. Like, I like seeing it drop from trees. Um, But visually, it's lacking, I agree. Yeah, Tarantula, very, very cute. Super cute. Love it. Love the idea. I love it. And then the, just Spide Ops, what happened? Yeah, what I happened? agree. I just don't know. All right. Well, yeah, I think those are two very easy wins. Now I have to think. Guess Spide Ops was what you were going to dunk on? It's very easy to. There's still Wugtrio. There is Wugtrio. I mean, let's start with that. Wugtrio is garbage. I think we all agree to put Wugtrio down there. Like, Yeah. Yeah, Wugtrio is garbage. Not only is Wugtrio garbage, it was like we were all hoping it wouldn't be that, right? Exactly. No, I was kind of hoping, I mean, with... With Toad's Toad is cool to Toad is cruel, I I'm not as mad about that existing um, as I am about Wiglet to Wug Trio because I think Wug Trio is absolutely like and th- what's worse is like Wug Trio makes sense too. I'm gonna honestly I'm gonna go out there and say uh, that Doug Trio does not make sense. Y- yeah, that Doug Trio does not make sense, but Wug Trio like actually thematically makes sense because the eels that Wiglet's based off of actually do bunch up like do cluster. They do cluster like that. It's still dumb. I don't think it looks good. Yeah, I hate it. It looks bad. The collar's bad. The the bending is bad. It's bad. On top of that, like, if we're going to have convergent evolution, maybe they can, like, diverge in their evolutionary paths as well. Like, that would be kind of cute to see, but... Right. Or give it a new, like, give it a, um, another extra evolution like we did with Zigzagoon, you know? Or, like, just be one really big eel. It could have been, like, Wigmore, and it would have been fine. I don't disagree with that. I think that would have been great. That's true, too. Yeah, Wug Trio, bottom. It's in the bottom. We have three in the bottom there. We have three in the bottom and two in the top. We need another on the top. I, I get I get a top, but I honestly don't know what it was going to be. Uh, because, like, everything, I'm just like, mm, this is okay. I, I think cloth is okay. I'm not super excited about it, but it's okay. Great shiny. But that's about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, cloth is, a, is, is neat. You know, I'm just sitting here, I'm like, I just think it's neat. Uh, with most of these Pokemon, because like nothing like really spoke to me outside of Toad Scroll, <laughs> where I was like, "Yeah, this is me. This is the vibe. <laughs> this is this is the vibe. I, I'm here for it. This gen. If they're if they're gonna do this with di- con- divergent evolutions, they can keep doing this all day long. All right, let me see what what else came. I mean, there's Tauros, but I I don't think Tauros is that exciting because I think there's too many. I think they just did too many Tauros. They kind of overshoot there. Yeah, I think it was just too many Pokemon. I'm glad they did. Uh, what, what, are we, we, do you want to, do you want to pass? <laughs> I, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass because I can't make a good answer. I can't make a good answer. What do you got, Sublime? Well, uh, let's see here. I'm going through it all real quick. Uh, design one. You're feeling the same way. I, I got a bunch. What you got? What Tell you us, got? Lydian. Uh, so I, I went out and made a list of these so I would have stuff in my head. Um, I don't want to dunk on too many babies, but this one just needs to be said. What is wrong with Shrudel? Oh, yeah, Shrudel doesn't need to exist. Uh, like, Grafii, they showed us. I'm like, oh, that's a cool single-stage Pokemon. Its stats aren't even that... Yeah, I was a little disappointed that they have that, like... And they're just like, oh, Shrudel needs to... Ex- you know what? Shrudel's in the bottom. I-, I came up with my top, by the way. I was scanning through everything again. I think it's a quick vote to Shrudel in the bottom. Just Shrudel specifically. Shrudel, not Grafii. And it's a monkey! Why does it start as a rat? <laughs> top five, top five, though, Clodzire. 
I think Claude's Ire is really cool. It is. You know what? I agree. I really like how they made it different than Quagsire, and I, I quite like Claude's Ire's design. I think Claude's Ire's design is very good, and I really like the animation when it attacks and everything. I like that it erupts into spikes. You, It's the kind of Pokemon you eventually drop, but it's really fun to have a ground type with water. Absorbed. Right. Uh, that said, it is not. It is going to be relevant because they redistributed its stats to be one of the best special walls in the game, like Blissey Tier. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm very excited for Claude's Ire. It is. I love Claude's Ire. I think it's a great Pokemon. I think the design is really good. It's fun. Because like you look at something like going from Persian to Berserker. And those seem, like, wildly different. I love how close Clodsire is to Quagsire, though. I love how they're close. It's an adult, uh, it's an adult, um, axolotl is what it is. Yeah, I know, I know, it is. Yeah, I, I agree with you. So, well, Claude's, uh, Quagsire is still, like, a bit on, uh, kind of based on the, the juvenile, which is the well-known one. This is just, like, they went to the full adult one, and that's, I like that. I just think it's really cute. I just think it's neat. I just think it's very that. Absolutely. I just think it's neat. I really like its design. Uh, yeah, it was a really, really good um, uh, variant evolution. Mm. With Clodsire, so the way I feel about things like Runarigris and Berserker, one, I really like Berserker. I think it's one of my favorite Gen 8 Pokemon. Mm. When I evolved my Pokemon into those for the first time, I always, I like a little piece of me felt like, oh, I'm kind of missing out though, because, you know, the previous evolutions are really cool. But with Clodsire, I was just like, no, this is my Quagsire. <laughs> I'm here. I'm not missing out. This is a good time. So we have four on the bottom, three on the top right now. Yes, we do. Yes. I have a suggestion for the top, okay. maybe. Okay. Uh, and it's associated with one of my favorite parts of the game. Rev of Room. Icon of Team Star. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's got a really cool design. Rev of Room? Rev of Room, yeah. Like the car engine exhaust with its tongue on the top with the multi sill. I haven't looked into it a lot um, because I'm very. Ex I was very excited about Rev of Room. I think I'm disappointed a little bit, but this is this is just me getting my hopes up. This doesn't have anything to say about uh, anything, because because like Rever Room does the cool thing with Team Star, right, where it becomes a car and then it gets like specific moves, kind of like Rotom almost. And I was kind of hoping we'd get that with Rever Room again. <laughs> and we just did. Well, I was kind of hoping that Rever Room would be like, oh, I get like a little bit of different stuff. Like we get Rotom 2.0. Well, let me say something on that. Rotom didn't get all its versions until Platinum mid gen. Yeah, it got them in Platinum, yeah. I agree. And so maybe that'll happen again. You know? So all I'm saying is, maybe it will. Maybe it will. My problem is I look at it and I'm like, ah, yes, a Splatoon character. Um, It it looks like a Splatoon villain more than it does a Pokemon to me. Well, I don't play Splatoon. I, and I neither do like I. Them. I just know what their art style goes. I don't know. Sure. I see that now that you say it, but I, I don't know. I really like the design and the concept. I'm like... I don't feel bad about it. If we don't think it's there, then it's not there. But, you know, I wanted to toss it out there. Let, let's keep it as something, as like a possible fifth slot. Yeah. You know? Like, there are a couple other things I want to talk about. I'll let you take the floor then. Okay. I want to preface this with, I did not think from uh, the concept of this Pokemon that I would like it. However, Tatsugiri is hilariously, f uh, is hilarious and done very, very well. To still look like something that could exist, like a fish, while being a sushi reference. Uh, yes. I love the three different colors, too, I will say. First time I saw the f different color, I thought it was a shiny, and I got so <laughs> excited, and then I caught it, and I was like, are you kidding me? And then you oh. saw another, and another. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and another. I was like, we just gave it three forms. Why does it have three forms? Is there any difference? Different types of sushi. It interacts with Dodonzo. So Dondozo has an I ability just different fish. Uh, named Order, has a, not an ability, has a signature move, Order Up, yeah. where depending on the form of Tatsugiri inside it gets a different buff. Oh, I see, I see, I see. That's actually good. That's good. Yeah. That is good. Uh, and they also made two Pokemon that are very much a, a partner gimmick, like Puzzle Minun, but by giving uh, Tatsugiri Storm Drain. And made it work? <laughs> Yeah, but also with Tatsugiri having Storm Drain, they don't have to be used together. That's true. But I think there's a lot of benefits to doing it. Uh, there are, and you should. But um, they learned from their mistake with plus and minus. And I think that that's commendable as well. I'm very impressed that they've made a doubles Pokemon strategy that actually works. Like, that's uh, that's my honest answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Dondozo isn't, like, just limited to being that because he's he's an extremely big unaware mon it's seeing ou uh success kind of like quagsire 
a little bit like with way more stats yeah it's like better quagsire honestly water is also just yeah. a very good type it is mm. a little less good without skull but still yeah i i mean i'm not against Tatsugiri either because like it's it, i mean it's a cute water dragon type mm-hmm. it is uh so like Tatsugiri is uh it, i mean it's also just cute yeah uh i like all its sex entries being like it's really smart but really weak and it's like okay with 120 special attack. So weak. So weak. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Well, yeah. And then you look at all of its other stats. It's like, oh, oh, you really can't do anything but, but attack. Yeah. I mean, it's not terrible. No. They're not that bad. No. They're not terrible, but it's not great. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd put Tatsugiri on the top. Hell yeah. I'd put it on the That's top. That's fine. Now, let's do that. I like it. So I think that fills up. No, it doesn't fill up anything. We've got four and four. Four and four. Four and four. No, we've got one more, and I have two I want to suggest for it later, but... <laughs> I want to suggest one for the top. Uh, it's not the strongest Pokemon, but I think it's the cutest Pokemon. Maybe. Okay, oh. that that could win. Doshbun! No. Uh, yeah. Mm, no? I love it. I love my bread boy. I think it's very cute, and again, it's above average, but I don't know if it's top five. It is. It's cute. I think it's a very good design, and it's got a cool ability. I, I like the ability being flash fire for something that, you know, doesn't... Isn't. Yeah. Uh, I I like it conceptually i just it, it's not top five and it looks i know they had to do a dachshund delicious adorable it i know it had to be a dachshund but i look at the incredibly long braided loaf body and i'm like this feels weird i don't i wish you would or a compressed dog i just i wouldn't put it top five i wouldn't put it top that's for sure i don't know i thought it was real cute okay what else it is got? really cute i mean there's a lot of pokemon well what about a bottom five we haven't we haven't talked about the you know horrible mistakes yet Okay, I have something that I think is very ugly, even though it's very strong. Uh huh. I think Goldango is hideous. No, I do agree with that. Actually, I think Goldango is horribly. No, it's hideous. I hate it. I think it's a horrible design. I really dislike its design. Yes, hate it. I think it's hilarious, and I I like him watch ride him on his skateboard. I love Goldango. No, I hated that too. And I love Gimme Ghoul, and I love Gimme I think Gimme Ghoul's got a cool design, and I think when they went to Golden Go, it was just weird and disgusting. I hate it. You, you, I feel like I'm going to be strongly outvoted here, but I just, I love that Pokemon. <laughs> That's not going to top five, I'll tell you that much. It's a cool Pokemon, don't get it wrong, but like, I think it's bottom design. I think design-wise, it's garbage, yeah. I, I love the design. I laughed for a solid five minutes, like my boyfriend had to check on me. Uh. <laughs> oh. It's just so derpy. What do you have, Lydian? That's not Golden Go. Uh, for the bottom five? Bottom or top, I don't care. For bottom, let's just, I need to say it. Iron Thorn is completely unanimated, and that is an egregious, unforgivable sin to me. I haven't seen it yet, to be fair, so I can't I can't comment. Love Iron Thorn. I like all of them. Yeah, I thought Iron Thorn was really cool. It, it's literally, it doesn't have any animations other than its attack and stuff. It, it, it just stands there, and I really don't like that. Like, I get it's, it's a robot or whatever, but... It it's just I really don't I really can't forgive that. Do we like Iron Valiant? I love Iron Valiant. Yes. Cause I kinda like it. Could we put that in top five? Because I kinda like Iron Valiant. I was wondering if well, I thought we were just avoiding. Actually, I have one last contender for top five before we do that. Okay, I think Iron Valiant makes it. Tinkaton though. Uh, it's mid. Because we weren't doing para like we haven't done any of the paradoxes. That's okay. I, but I feel like we should talk about them though. Like, we haven't yet on the show, but... Okay. I think Iron Valiant is cool. Iron Valiant is cooler to me than Tinkaton, and I like Tinkaton, but Iron Valiant... Yeah, but the thing is, I like a lot of the Paradox designs. I just thought we weren't touching those. Yeah, I don't. I think we're in a good place where we've got four others, and we could, like, make that their own category with one slot. Have that the one, yeah. Okay, alright. Because I was also going to argue that... Armorug, Armoroge, and Saraledge could share it as well. Those are also very good. Those are good. I, I think I prefer Valiant. I think I... Over, I don't know, like, the fact that some of the stuff is in this top five and not them is like, oh, okay. Okay, then we can dunk, let, let's, let's kick something else out. I think we could kick out Tatsugiri or Oblivia. I think we could kick out Tatsugiri. Like, it's a, con I, top five? I don't know, it's cool, but I don't know if it's top five. I think we could kick that out for Sar Saraledge and Armorouge. I do agree with that. Uh, Armor Rouge sharing a slot, yeah. 
I really like Slitherwing a lot, but I that's not going to be as as broadly held. I actually really like um, the Violet version, the Iron Moth. As well. I like, they did good with both of those. It's a strong vibe. I just like Slitherwing being such a departure. Like, it's a bipedal moth dinosaur. It, and it, it, I like how the wings fold back to be like, almost like a, a sail or spines. Yeah. But I don't like either of them as much as Iron Valiant. Yeah, there's a lot, that's the thing. That's why I thought we just weren't touching the Paradox, because they're very much their own thing. Yeah. I like a lot of the Paradox designs. I think the Paradox designs are interesting. I think once we get more story on them, it'll make more sense. Because, like, I I just have, like, this disconnect between, like, I don't know why our magnets existed in the past and they're walking. Uh, Mostly Sandy Shock bothers me. I I really like Sandy Shock. I'm sorry. It looks absurd. Because it's, uh, yeah, I like the idea of the, like, magnetic sand. Yeah. As its interpretation. It's magnetic sand. I just sit here and I go, but why does this exist as a Pokemon in the past? Um, which probably doesn't, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, right. <laughs> well, if we want to just stick Iron Valiant, that's fine. Um, I think Iron Valiant is, uh, is very good. I think it's better than, Ro- I think it's better than Roaring Moon. It's great. Yeah. Iron Valiant is great. And it's got fairy fighting, which was a very requested type, and it's got the stats to use it. It does. I do like Roaring Moon a lot as well, but yeah, I'm down with Iron Violent, Valiant. I think uh, Iron Valiant is better. I- Iron Valiant, um, what, that locks our top five now, too. Yes. Uh, what is it? I vaguely lost track. Palafin, Claude Zire, Armor slash Sir Ledge, and Iron Valiant. Arboliva. What's the worst? Uh, what, what's bad? Let's see. Um, Y'all dunked on, uh, Golden Go, uh. <laughs> yeah, I'll dunk on Golden Go all day. It's fine. All day. That thing is so dumb. For bottom paradox, Scream Tail. Yes. I hate it. I do not like it. Nope, it doesn't need to exist. Why? Because I don't have that version, so I'm curious. Because I look at it and it looks cool. It doesn't need to exist. I want to grab it by the handle and just... You know that scene in the first Avengers with uh, Hulk and Loki? I just want to do that. Uh, Its stats are garbage. And it doesn't do... Like, I don't understand why it's Psychic Fairy. It's pretty good in VGC. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. How? Yeah, it's it's bulky. It's bulky. Mm-hmm. And then does what with it? Yep. Support. Just a lot of support. Uh, I don't know. No, I do. I can't get behind it. The only w- reason I want to get behind it is with a large mallet. I mean, I like it more than Golden Go, but I haven't really played it. So. I mean, yeah, but in terms in terms of paradox mods, I think it's the worst one. Visually or what? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Just in general, I think it's the worst. I cause maybe it's because I haven't seen it in person. And they're everywhere, and they're just floating. See, yeah, I don't have these complaints. It's the Violet player. Yeah, here. I know. So, like, if you guys say so, I just don't see it for. Uh, I'm putting Screamtail. I like Screamtail uh, in the bottom. Sure. Uh, is there anything else we hate more? No, we have no. We have no more slots. Is there any, no, that was good. it. Okay, then we're. Do we think Rick's Calib- Bax Caliber looks good? I don't know. I think it's fine. I like it. It's okay. I'm neutral on it, I guess. Yeah, I I don't like it. I don't dislike it. It's just fine. I like it. I think he's cute. Uh, yeah. Dondozo's ugly, actually. Dondozo's ugly. Dondozo is ugly, but I it's got enough other stuff going for it. I don't put it in my bottom five. Sure. All right. See, so I like a lot of the things in the bottom five. They're just like not the best. Our our top five is uh, our Believer. Palafin, Claude Zire, Armor Rouge, slash Sarah Allege, Iron Valiant, that's our top five. Uh, and then we've also got in the bottom five, Skull Villain, Spide Ops, Wug Trio, Shrudel, and Screamtail. Actually, after reading them as a group, I go, yes, these are correct. <laughs> like, as a group, like, you know what I mean? Like The only thing I feel in my heart needs to change is Goldango should be on the bottom, but that's okay. I don't think we're going to get that. <laughs> that's okay. I'd probably put it there before Shrudel, but that's okay. It, it's, it's close to being top in steel and ghost on my little chart but it doesn't quite edge out the the pokemon there i truly love this little this little goblin <laughs> all right well you guys can send, send in emails letting us know what your top five and bottom five uh paul d and pokemon are for next week but until then we're gonna kick it on over uh to the pokemon of the episode we'll catch you on the flip-flop <laughs> episode and welcome to our pokemon of the episode our pokemon of the episode is going to be flamigo and it doesn't have a national dex number so enjoy hey
It is the synchronized Pokemon classification. All right. Uh, thanks to a behavior of theirs known as synchronizing, an entire flock of these Pokemon can attack simultaneously in perfect harmony. Yay. Yeah. So it's just that that uh, short from Fantasia, you know? Yeah. Flamingo is super interesting. Is that based on actual flamingos? Like, do flamingos do that? Synchronize? No, it's... Yeah. Not really. Okay. I think they were just it's doing it because they all danced together. Okay. I was just wondering if it was like, oh, do flamingos have, like, perfect, like, are they in sync? No, but he's know. flamingo. He's your friend, mm. so they're all friends with each other. Yeah, he is your friend, so he's on your level. I like yeah, that. And That's I mean, true. the stats aren't bad either. Base 115 attack, base 90 speed. This is insane. Yeah, and you can get this on the first route, too. Yeah, you can get this on the first route, and, I mean, it is a single evolution. It's flying fighting, which is just... Great type. Yeah, it's just... Seth is sh- shuddering in fear somewhere. It's just Halucha. Uh, it's Halucha without yeah. uh, without Unburden. It's fine. A friend of mine in college had a Flamingo uh, fake mon for something, and it was named Flamingo, so... <laughs> <laughs> That that uh made me. Giggle. The only thing you got wrong was that it didn't look exactly like a flamingo. Flamingo. <laughs> it wasn't just a flamingo. Uh, it was fighting flying though. So yeah, I mean it's great because they kick right. They're kind of like they're like worse kangaroos. <laughs> I mean, it's always got the one leg up in the air, so it could just like kick you with it. Yeah. <laughs> so flamingo though has the ability coaster, which makes it exciting. Uh, Co-Star is an ability for doubles specifically. Um, this isn't for the singles meta, but uh, when a Pokemon with Co-Star enters the battle, it copies the ally stat changes for itself. So if it's you psych are, ups for free. it is a free psych up, which is amazing and very awesome, and it works together with a lot of the things on today's team that we have. I I mean, this is a very fun team, and I think this is very. Spe- I mean, there's 30 different versions of this team floating around. Yeah, I think on VGC Twitter right now. So you could definitely find a team like this very easily that fits what your play style is, but this is the one that we have. So we're not going to start with Flamigo today, though. We're going to start with uh, the things that help set up the strategy, and I believe you have that. Linear. You mean the co-stars? The co-stars. Co-star? The co-stars yes. for the co-star, yeah. Starting off with an underappreciated co-host who just got kicked off the uh, top five, only to start apparently self-harming, <laughs> Tatsugiri. Yes, so Tatsugiri is holding a black sludge, and you're probably going, hey, wait, uh, I didn't think it was a poison type. Correct. You are correct. Uh, it's not. Uh, it is level 50, of course, because it's a VGC. 252 special attack, 252 uh, speed, with a mild nature to make it easier to knock out. Zero HP, zero attack, zero defense, zero special defense EVs. Yeah, yeah. If, you're probably, if you're really confused, allow me to explain. It has the ability Commander. Uh, and the uh, but the moves that it won't use too often are uh, hydro pump and protect endure helping hand. The goal of this Tatsugiri is to get very low on health to trigger its ability Commander. Now, how Commander works is it jumps inside Dodonzo's mouth. Pokemon we'll get to in a second and gives it a uh, plus two to all of its stats. Basically, extreme Evo boost. Extreme Evo boost, yeah. This makes Dondozo, who was already kind of nasty, like a very strong Pokemon with unaware, uh, and makes it basically able to 2v1, which is good because while Tatsugiri is in Dondozo's mouth, it can't be targeted, but also can't act. It's a 2v1 situation. But if Tatsugiri faints, you can send another Pokemon out. Now, because it's untargetable, it's very difficult for this thing to faint. Unless it's holding a black sludge, which will... Kill it yeah. while in Dondozo's mouth. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely agree. Uh, which leads us to uh, Dondozo with its ability unaware, uh, 252, uh, 244 HP, 20 attack, 4 defense, 4 special defense, 236 speed. Uh, adamant nature. Now, Dondozo is slow, but with over a hundred, with 150 HP and like 130 attack and 100 defense, with those plus twos, this thing hits like a truck and uh, really won't die. Uh, it's got the moves of Wave Crash, which is just Flare Blitz without a burn chance, and a water type, Earthquake, it's Earthquake, Protect, it's Protect, and Order Up. Now, Order Up will boost, like we said earlier, will boost a stat based on whichever Tatsugiri is in its mouth. I believe this one buffs your attack. Yeah, that's the one that people typically use. Mm-hmm. 
Speed is also somewhat of a thing, but... Yeah. Speed, yeah. It's not as big as the attack one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there, we have no Dynamax, so we have no, like, auto-boost this ter- this gen, right? Uh, so mm-hmm. I think I think this entire team is just, like, is a team that wishes that Dynamax was still a thing. <laughs> because uh, once you set all that up and Tatsuguri goes down, you send out Flamigo. Uh, oh, also, I just noticed this... Uh, Don Dozo's terror type is ground. Oh, it is. Oh, yep. oh, we need to mention that, huh? Oh yeah, we have to put terror types in. That's a thing to miss, isn't it? Yeah, we do have to do ty- terror types. Yeah, Flamigo. Flamigo is holding a choice scarf. Um, it is got its ability co-star, so it'll copy those stat changes that Don Dozo has gotten from eating the Tatsugiri. Um, it is jolly nature, so we're gonna go fast because we are two- max attack, max speed. And it has got Brave Bird, Close Combat, Throat Chop, and U-Turn. And if you're plus one on that 115 attack, and you're already at plus one with the Choice Scarf on the speed, you're just going to do some damage with the Flamingo that you never thought you could oh, do. Oh, no, but it's plus two. That's yeah, plus two. That's right. It's plus two. Maybe three if you can get... <laughs> yeah. Because Unaware Order. is one of those abilities that isn't affected by Intimidate. <laughs> yes. It's great. It's a good time. You know, I I always knew this was strong. Like I was like, yeah, that'll be good. And then I realized stab, close combat, and brave bird. That hadn't really settled in yeah. with me yet. Yeah, those are big moves. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be good. And then of course you've uh, because this is VGC and he'll never die in that format. We've got Rotom Heat to to back everything up just in case he can't kill it all with brave bird and close combat and wave crash. Uh, also, also, by the way, the Dunzozo gets a quick earthquake for free with the Flamingo on the field. Yep. <laughs> Just gets to keep clicking it. It's fine. It's fine. What a healthy meta. <laughs> yeah, we've also got Rotom Heat with Levitate, uh, obviously. Uh, he is uh, 220 HP, 4 defense, 116 special attack, 4 special defense, 164 speed, modest nature... Uh, this is this is literally just a Rotom. There is nothing different about this. Uh... It is Overheat, Thunderbolt, Will-O-Wisp, and Protect with this Road of Heat. There, there's nothing new about this Road of Heat. <laughs> this is just the one that we've been running for the past 20 years. Or not 20, 15 years. So, yeah, keep on keeping on. Sublime, you got these last two. Yeah, we got some ghosties to add to the team. Uh, we'll start with Annihilate with the Life Orb and the Defiant ability. So I dare you to bring Intimidate, okay? I dare you. Level 50, of course, with uh, 28 EVs in HP, 220 attack, 4 defense, 4 special defense, and 252 speed. Uh, it's got a jolly nature, so we're all in on speed. And then we're running, uh, running close combat, rage fist, which is a new move, taunt and protect. And rage fist is, um, an interesting move. Its power increases by 50 each time the user was hit during a battle. Uh, so if you can get it hit a couple times, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Uh, this includes if it hits itself in confusion, um, yeah. But doesn't include things like entry hazards and, and poison. And switching out doesn't cancel it. And it adds all the way up until it's 350 base power, so, uh. Yeah, fun fact, Smogon had this move programmed incorrectly for a while, so, like, even hazards and things were setting it. Oh no. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah. Uh, also, what's really funny, it's not reset on Switch, and that was coded correctly. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we also have Dragapult to finish up the team. Yeah, that thing is nasty, and ghost fighting is excellent. I know, I noticed that. It, I noticed that it got it. And I'm like, and it's a three stage, so like the stats can't be garbage, right? And no, and it's like all HP, attack, and speed. It's like, oh, you're just, oh no. <laughs> yeah, Nihilate is real good. <laughs> Yeah, they they really said, Primeape, you deserve the spotlight, and they gave it. I love that, because Primeape's one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon, so, like... I'm... Same, I actually love Bisharp as well, so I'm excited for him as well. I just um, wish King Gambit wasn't a crime against nature and man. Yeah, but I'm happy for the Bisharp line as a whole. And then, uh, Dragapult, uh, you needed a, you needed another dra- uh, ghost up in here, with the Choice Band, so physical. Um, Terra-type Ghost, so we can get rid of that Dragon Weakness. Uh, adamant nature, though. Um, 252 speed, 252 attack, 4 HP. Couldn't be simpler. Uh, Dragon Darts, which is the real nerf of Gen 9, no longer shoots Dreepy, I, I understand. What? What? That's the real nerf. No! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Zero to ten, worst games ever made. Yeah. Yep, yep. Wow, okay. I'm taking a point off. I'm taking a whole point off. <laughs> 
Reddit's right. Time to go burn uh, down Game Freak. Yep. Yep. Phantom Force. Because uh, you know, sometimes you want a Phantom Force. Sucker Punch and U-Turn. So watch out. Hard U-Turns. All right. Well, this is a great... I mean, this is a great team. I mean, this is something that I would definitely pick up and just use to get into the Scarlet and Violet meta. Because it's a very simple strategy, but it's also the kind of combos you'd you kind of want to get used to especially this because this is gonna be prevalent yeah because this is kind of like they're gonna be there the whole time. the way the way i saw this was i'm like oh so this is the strategy that's just gonna be there the whole time that people are just gonna kind of cling to um and until we come up with something better which we probably will but not everybody will flock to it like they'll flock to this it feels like trick room in that it will always be around yeah. and it will mess you up if you're not ready for it i agree with that you have to build knowing about it but it's probably never gonna win worlds you know (laughs) i don't know i wouldn't be surprised if it did but i'll i it depends also what they do in the coming months because like i don't know how they're gonna handle the rules for vgc if they're gonna handle it like they did during sword and shield where the rules are just changing every two or three months yeah Uh, which one is fine if they do that uh because incineroar is not coming back so i'm fine with this uh I will say this team is hard stopped by one Pokemon, and that is, of all things, Murkrow, which is seeing a lot a of, lot of play right now. Yeah. Uh, cause Prankster Haze. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. The thing your team set up around just doesn't work anymore. Done. Yep. Just gone. Yeah. That's very true. That's very true. But yes, uh, yeah, go ahead, try it out. Uh, it's not going to go out to patrons this team just yet. We're waiting for the bot to be updated, like I said before. But either way, we've got an advent calendar, and you can get your uh, shiny 6IV Japanese ditto. It'll be a good time. And as I understand it, this will go out to patrons, just not right now. Yeah, just not right now. Uh, eventually. Well, we'll it's, we have advent calendars, so once we get the new bot, they'll actually end up getting like their own line in the advent calendar. So it'll be fine. Uh, all right. Until then, though, we're going to take it on over to the mailbag. Welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag is the part of the show where we read your emails on the show. You can email us at pucklepodcast at gmail.com and we'll possibly read your email on the show. If not, they make it to our Discord server over at pucklediscord.com where other people can enjoy them. Uh, Last week we asked you guys what you thought of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, so that was a loaded question. And we got a good number of emails, so we're going to read a few of them for you guys today. But before I do, I just want to remind everybody that this segment is brought to you by the fictional energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves! Soon coming out with their black cherry and uh, black raspberry flavors. Cranberry. Give me that cranberry winter. Ooh, black cranberry. That might be the new one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that maybe that's the new one. We'll have to make our suggestions. Yeah. That feels like uh, they just opened their door one day and the ocean spray people were there with cranberry juice or a gun and it was their choice. Yes. And you know what? I welcome them. They're working on their new flavors, guys. Okay. We're going to have to have we're going to have to come up with like new badges. It's going to be cute. Terra Blast. That should definitely. Oh, no. You never know what Terra type is going to be in the can. All right. So this next e- this is our first email this week is going to be from the British gent. Dear Thatch and his fellow co-host, Shamu and Mark. Oh, this must have been from last week. Oh, yeah, he sent this right after we finished recording the episode or something. Jumping straight into the topic, new game net week. It's been all right. Not much of a progress week compared to previous new game releases for me, but that doesn't mean I've I've not been doing much in game. That's so true about this game, though. So as some of you know, this game has been the game. This game has been the game I've actually been able to play play a Pokemon game with my daughter together, and it works. Mostly, I can't tell you how happy this made my daughter to see her jump up and tell her mom that she caught a Pokemon in my game she hadn't seen in hers. This game is the best. I can leave her to it and play alone because she understands what's going on. She can easily see where she needs to go. She can easily pick up what type of the Pokemon turn into when they when they get their party hats on as well. Yes, it does look daft, but the aim of the party hats is to easily show children the typings. I think it's honestly to show ch- adults the typings too, but that's just me. <laughs> Listen, they're just Philip Tracy hats as far as I'm concerned, and I love them. I think they're required. Like, they've definitely grown on me after the initial release where I was like, this is dumb. But, like, one, we need them because if not, you don't know what the Terra type of the Pokemon is. And two, they're definitely got pretty classy with some. I do think the Dark type hat is pretty poop, though. I don't disagree, which is a bummer. I think that one's just a letdown. I like the Steel hat a lot because it's just, okay. It's an axe. Yes, I love the Steel one. Most of them are just, like, very wild and out there, and then 
the ones you didn't think would be tame are the tamest. Yeah. Like, I didn't think that we would get such a tame dark type hat. And I'm just like, this needs to be better. That Like, that's the one that needs to be better for sure. Like, it just doesn't match with the rest of them. I think the psychic type and the fairy type hats are kind of lame too. Gorgeous. I like the psychic hat a lot. The psychic one, I think, is the most, is the best of the ones I just said. All right. It may have taken over five hours before we got to the first town. I caught and filled my Pokedex to near over 50. Everybody's just doing like Professor Oak challenges now before we play the game. I didn't mean to, but I did the same, so. Same, but I don't know if I got to 50, but like, I, it took me an hour to get to Megasoza more than it should have, yeah. probably. Oh, oh, it took me three. I had 54 things in my decks because I checked. I found a shiny Stantler. I've not truly ventured past the first town and it's taken me over five hours. And that's not down to going to school and being taught how to play the game. Crazy, I know. To be fair, the school is not actually that bad. I, I actually like it. For the most part, I like it. We're in like the three houses. Everybody's got to go to school, you know? Like, I'm here for it. They try to do like the dating sim type deal with like you becoming better friends with your professors. Professors? It was okay. I think they could have strengthened that a little bit. But it's it, it's a poke. It was exactly what I expected the Pokemon game to do with that. <laughs> there are also ones post uh, Area Zero for Arwen. Yeah, for Arwen and Penny and all of that. Mm -hmm. But they are. I feel like those could have been worked in earlier, but also not. I don't know. It feels weird. Yeah, it, I think the problem was they really wanted you to like get together at the end with all of them, and so it delayed a lot of things in terms of their character. All right. Where was I? As of right now, I'm currently standing at four gyms, three titans, and two star bases down. So I've got a fair bit to go. Overall, I'm loving what I see. It, this doesn't mean that I haven't had a couple of bad points on the list in mind. Fallen through a corner, trying to jump up a ledge. I've had a couple of visual glitches while battling. The worst was while my daughter had joined my game, though. We played an hour or so exploring, finding new Pokemon. A flamigo, a favorite animal of hers. Ralts, <laughs> Pom Pom, or a Corio, to name a few. We also had a moment of, wait... Is that, is that, daddy, daddy, is that, is the, it's the tiny new po coin Pokemon from the Pokemon game on your phone. We can catch it at last. Aww. Only to find out we couldn't catch it and the disappoint the disappointment set in. To be fair, I do kind of think that us not being able to catch roaming form <laughs> really cool in the game is kind of dumb. I would agree, except, uh, man, anything more than a single A press on those things in the overworld would get taxing immediately. I don't disagree. Listen, I need the coin because I want to save up for a second. So, yeah. I'll take them whenever I see them. Only to find out that we couldn't catch it and disappointment set in. But this wasn't the worst bit. That happened moments later. The game crashed. Just over an hour of exploring gone. This was Friday night of release. So as you are most likely asking, did we use the method of reloading the secret backup save game? I believe it, it may have been pinned to the Discord. No, we didn't. That wasn't out at that point. Yes, unfortunately, we had tears. An hour of exploring all the land just after the lighthouse gone. So is the game perfect? Oh, no. <laughs> does it have visual glitches yes can i look past it yes annoying but still yes but that's just me the designs of po the pokemon are great from what i've seen so far and i think shamu has heard a couple of my reactions to the pokemon evolving and finding some uh, my beautiful fue coco being one i'm mainly looking at you f looking at you flamingo story wise i'm liking what i've seen so far i still got some way to go though so i can't give too much in on that the raids so far have been fun, and I'm looking forward to raiding with others when I actually get time. Overall, this is a vast improvement from Swish. For me, best Pokemon game. The time I spent with my daughter playing this Dang. game, I can't explain to you how it feels. Mixed, yes, but very, very good, mainly. That's all for now. I can easily talk more, but I'll likely do that in voice chat and Discord. I also need to get over England's performance against the USA in the World Cup. I need a strong cup of tea. <laughs> Till next time, the British jet. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, that must be embarrassing. Because, <laughs> like, they care about soccer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Spain lost to Japan, and that can't feel good. No, that can't. All right. Uh, who's got the next one, and what is it? I don't know who it is. I'll take it. Bear? Okay, go ahead. All right, I'll take it. We got one from Bear. Uh, please help me, Puckle Crew. I took a week off from work. A week to play Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I fell in love with it so much. Damn. Good for you. Dedication. I run a Pokemon podcast and I didn't do that. Yeah, I took a day. I work home from Friday, so I basically phoned it in at work and played on Friday. When it came. I took a day off uh, and it doubled as like a date day because, you know, partners playing it too, but like, I didn't take a week. <laughs> uh, 
played it for 85 hours in the 10 days from release till Sunday. Well, okay, I might have played 85 in those, like, four days, so maybe maybe our definitions of obsessive are just a little different. <laughs> um, you, you, that His seems healthier, to be clear. Yeah, he just went to work playing Pokemon instead of going to work for 10 days, like... Versus me, who did literally nothing else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did other things. I wanted to slow burn this a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. I wasn't rushing. I was just doing nothing else, which there's a difference. <laughs> uh, right. My wife and I played it together. Riding alongside her on my Pokeon, Pokemon and Paldea is my equivalent to horseback riding at the beach. It was wonderful and relationship goals have been achieved. Uh, I especially enjoyed the stories. While some characters, yes. mainly the gym leaders, were played to be a joke, the ones that matter in the overarching story felt very human, and some of them really pulled at my heartstrings. Uh, the stories had some good twist and enough intrigue that I questioned the true intentions and motivations of some characters. How all stories have been woven together at the end felt natural. All of my companions have proven themselves as being capable in some way, shape, or form, and therefore I believe that these teenagers, young adults, are capable of tackling the challenges presented. Oh yeah, favorite story in a Pokemon game. Period. I think, honestly, in terms of characters as well, this is probably the strongest one so far. Every gym leader is somewhat memorable. I like that they toned down the designs to still be creative, but not, like, garish. Right? They all seem like they would be real people in the real world, especially Larry. Yes! The Elite Four in particular, I think, is a good example of that. The rematches add a lot, too. Because, like, Katie, just forgettable, whatever, she's fine. And then you come back and she's like, yeah, I think I'm just going to stop holding back on new kids. You're like, oh, uh-oh, I feel like I that was a mistake. You should probably hold back on new kids. <laughs> it was just like, oh, no, what have I done? No, go back, I'll lose. <laughs> you're supposed to be the first gym. You're going to crush everybody. It's going to be sad. It's like, okay, Katie's a blood knight. That's an interesting characterization. Mm -hmm. Uh, I only wish we could have chosen our character's age. The school is clearly an all-age university. Please let me yeah, at least be true. as the same age as Nimona and Arvin. No, no, for real, though, they should have done that. I think if they're not going to let us change our clothes, they should have at least let us check, check, take our age because there are so many students with beards. One of them was a grandmother. <laughs> oh, there's 100% elders up at this school, and I'm like, what kind of school is this? I'm confused now. A well-funded public university. It's fine. I definitely like battled student something and it was it was like a 65 70 year old woman well they have time now they've retired yeah, I don't I mean I'm not saying that that can't happen <laughs> just let me choose my age because I think that would have been like I think in terms of character customization that would have been the best to let us choose our yeah. age although this was the most robust character customization we've gotten in terms of like making your character yes uh just not the clothing options but i think that might come in dlc or something no just in terms of like your face hair it, you know it would be great if the dlc starts with them being like all right hey it's now break so you can wear whatever you want <laughs> i could see that happening i could see that happening that'd be pretty cool if it was just like it's break it's summer vacation or shit, whatever yeah Meanwhile, purple's my favorite color, so I'm good. You finish The Way Home, right? And then the DLC is the fifth story, and it explicitly starts with the Club L saying, Our treasure hunt was fantastic. Now that the year is finished, it's summer vacation, and all of you can wear whatever you like. Go explore again. And then it ends, and you're like, all right. Then we have your little story plot, but they've explicitly given you a reason to be able to take off the uniform. It's the beach episode. Yeah! <laughs> we go to the Isle of Armor. That, that's what they need to do. Scarlet gets a beach zone, <laughs> and Violet gets a hot springs episode. <laughs> All right. Uh, can, yeah, keep going. For me, it's time to go back to being Larry. Best regards, Bear. We got to the end. <laughs> oh, we were at the end. Okay. Love Larry. Yeah, Larry's, love Larry. Larry's the MVP. Larry's MVP. Truly. I love any character who tells children to stop dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've got one more today, and I believe it's from uh, Dooley. Dooley noted, yes. All right, I will wrap this up. Hey there, Thatch and Company. It's been a while since I've written into the mailbag. So my thoughts on uh, Scarlet and Violet, and I'm, this is me speaking, but um, I want to call it Scurvy, like Scarlet and Violet. Pokemon scurvy? scurvy you know? oh, I like it. Uh, scurvy, yeah, Scurvy. I'm trying to make that catch on. So try to say <laughs> it. Uh, I'll try not to ramble on too much. <laughs> you will not make Scurvy happen. Oh, it already made, already made scurvy happen. No, I don't know. If you don't eat enough lemons, it happens. 
Quality of life. Uh, at first I was disappointed that you could not enter houses. Then I remembered how creepy that actually is. Just walking up someone's house <laughs> while they're having dinner, playing with their Pokemon, going through their trash crayons. So yeah, I appreciate that is not part of the game. You know, he right though. He right though. No, well, so to be fair, a lot of people complain about not being able to go into a lot of the houses. And for me, I was just like, well, Sword and Shield is kind of the same. And I think it was a little bit more egregious because you'd enter the town and then there'd be very few things you can go into. And here, at least, it's just like the world is the the overworld is like the thing you're supposed to is like the main course. Yeah. And like, incidentally, you can go into more places and towns now just because they have shops everywhere. Um, That's true. They they did the Persona thing where they had a couple buildings you could go in in the entire game, but most of the shops are menus, and that's fine. Yeah, I'm okay yeah, with, I'm that. Fine with that. I'm okay with it. I don't want more loading screens. Yeah, and you know what? The towns have a lot of personality and character. Mm -hmm. Every town. I agree, actually. So, it doesn't bother me as well. A quality of life. I love breeding Pokemon, going for six IVs, shiny egg hunting, but it's always taken forever. Now, it's so much easier, which makes it so much more fun to do. It's so much faster. So many other quality of life improvements. Sure, it's still a grind, but it's less of a grind and more fun. I love the open world freedom, although it's difficult to actually go, quote, in the order you want without scaling. I decided to try Iono's gym first. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go so well. Well, well, yeah, it's open world. It doesn't mean you can just go to the hardest spot. You're pretty much right. Yeah, right. Um, plus, you can't really traverse the terrain until you get enough Titans to upgrade your right Pokemon. Yep. Well, yeah, you gotta do that too. That's part of it. Like I said earlier, I think this is a perfect way for them to have handled a Pokemon open world game, though. I loved it. Like, I like how they handled so many things. I think doing level scaling is a horrible idea. Agree. This is a very good way to handle it, where we could do it. Like, we yeah. had the opportunity to do it, but we're going to get smacked for doing it. Yeah, like, I don't know about you guys. I went west first, then kind of had to retreat back east. Uh, I did Katie, the gym. I don't remember the directions. Uh, and then I went back and did Cloth, and then I did the dark. Did you go to Brassius? Is that what you did, Sublime? No. I did Brassius first. The water gym was my second badge, actually. Yeah, I stayed on the west side for a while. I went there. Then I way. went back and did Bra uh, Brassius. Then I, I did Brassius there. first. I did the left, left and right. Yeah, that works both ways. I'm also kind of like impressed with the size of the world. Like, I'm pretty impressed with it. Same. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the glitchiness, his disappointments. I do hope they patch it soon. I have the latest OLED and it takes several seconds to render the Pokemon when I switch to different boxes. It crashed, it crashed on me once, but thank Arceus for autosave. Everybody keeps talking about the OLED versus the launch switch, by the way. I don't know how to tell people that there isn't, like, any real performance difference. There's no appreciable difference. There's no difference? The big difference is cartridge versus download. Well, like, when they came out the OLED, they specifically said, like, the hardware is not any different. It's just a better screen. You buy it for the white Joy-Cons, the OLED screen, and the better kickstand. You don't buy it for any performance gains. They still don't let you back up your saves to the cloud. I mean, you invest hours for the game, make some connections to your Pokemon, probably will be bringing in your old favorites from bank, or I mean home. And if anything happens to your Switch, it's bye-bye to everything. I already had this happen in Sword, lost some of my old favorite mons too. It's a duplication thing. Yeah. And then Poppy of the Elite Four is on his disappointment. I agree. What is she like? Six? I hardcore agree. I don't hate her. Whatever. It's fine. Well, Poppy 1 is the least developed of all of the Elite Four members as a character. Sure, but she's like a kid also, so like she has childlike behavior. Yeah, okay, that needs to be explained to me. She's just a battle prodigy. Because they say that Nimon is the youngest champion, and then, so is Poppy not a champion to be on the Elite Four? I guess not. But what's Poppy doing testing people to become champion? I'm so confused. You know what? Uh, she's just that girl. Look, she never took the qualification- what if, you know, there might just be a minimum age and she just hasn't hit it yet? <laughs> Thatch. I'm so confused. Look, it's a very, it's a classic Anakin situation. They haven't granted <laughs> her the title of champion, but she is allowed to sit on the council. <laughs> I just get, I'm just so confused by Poppy as a character and I just don't like her. I don't think it's that much to think about. Like, it's just a kid that's really good. Like, you know, let it be. I hope that she gets development over the DLC. I'm not I'm not going to hold my breath for that, but I wouldn't because it's possible if 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 they go because she very clearly with her steel type and the color of her hair and stuff, she resembles Wickstrom a lot. Yes. And if uh, they do anything with the fact that France is right there, then maybe that'll come up. Who knows? I feel like people are expecting something Colossian. Yeah, I don't know why, but I keep hearing that. They mark the thing off on the map, though, like the area on the map where it's at is like X'd off instead of just like 
saying this is the circle of Paldea and here's a really tall mountain range you can't catch. They're just like, no, there's land there. We're just not letting you go. Yeah, there's definitely going to be something there. Uh, there may be, there may not. It might just be how they wanted to handle that border. Uh, but still, uh, th- there's hope for Poppy. I just don't care about her. I don't hate her because that, that would that would require you know feeling. It's like mm. I don't mind her. I'm very neutral on her. Like I'm neutral to positive. Yeah, a lot of people seem to dislike her though. In all honesty, if they really wanted to make this, like, best Pokemon game ever, they give us Kalos. Like, I think that would be insane. That would be. You're right. That would be insane. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. But if they did it, I would be like, I best Pokemon generation. Yeah, done. Like, it happened. They they just let us into Kalos. Why? <laughs> well, you know, I think uh, of the modern generation of Pokemon, 6 was my favorite until 9. So we just flipped it around. That's all. I agree. No, I agree with you. And it would be insane if they, like, combined them somehow. Like, it would just be insane. I I wouldn't be able to fathom it. Anyway, I've rambled enough. Thanks for reading this. I gotta get back into the Discord and join in some raids with you guys. Keep on keeping on. This mailbag letter is duly noted. Well, thank you for that, Dooley. Do we have anybody we want to give the uh, Green Taurus badge to today? We'll give it to all of them again. You guys did so great. Yeah, why not? All right. You can try for the Green Taurus badge next week by sending us an email to pokopodcast at gmail.com and letting us know what your top five and bottom five Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet are. Or maybe just like one. Maybe like a top and a bottom. Not the whole list. And tell us why. If you just get to send us a list, it probably won't be read on the show. So tell us why. Pucklepodcast at gmail.com. Until then, though, if you want to keep up with Puckle, best way to do so is come over to our Discord at PuckleDiscord.com. You can, of course, follow us at social media over on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter until it dies. And you can continue to go watch us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash thepucklepodcast at YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash c slash pucklepodcast, where we, we live stream to both right now. Uh, I'm trying to do Tuesdays and Thursdays. And uh, I think this Thursday, uh, Seth and I are going to deck test with each other for our upcoming uh, Arlington Regional. We'll see how well that goes. Hmm. I can't because well, like none of the uh, none of the like the software is updated. So it kind of sucks. Um, like a lot of big important cards just don't work on PCCGO or Pokemon Live. It's really bad. Additionally, if you would uh, like to support the show, you can always do so at patreon.com slash Pokemon podcast. We've got game corner for you over there. We've got an exclusive chat on the discord and we do our we are doing a giveaway right now for the uh, for the shiny Japanese six IV ditto. And of course, there's going to be a new advent calendar track for you as soon as the bot updates. Until then, though, I have been uh, Trainer Thatch. I continue to be sublime. And I'm Linian. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. Yeah.